Hey everyone, my name is Dave Nixon and welcome back to another episode of the Peak and Flow podcast. This is a, another podcast as part of the Boss Fit 30 program and today we're going to talk about a very important principle called 1 verse 23 or 1v23. Now it's a very simple process and a very simple principle that speaks to this idea that you're one hour in the gym and you're welcome to swap the word gym for whatever it may be for you, but your one hour in the gym should be positively impact your 23 hours outside of that facility. Otherwise, it is no longer a investment, a benefit. It is a cost rather than an investment. It's a very, very simple principle. And I know that a lot of people align with this stuff. It's just making sure that we're making it clear that if our time in the gym does not yield a return on the investment outside of it, then why are we doing it? That means if I'm not personally becoming a better father, better husband, better leader, uh, a calmer person, am I sleeping better? Am I more patient with conversations? Am I looking after myself more, which gives me far more, let's call it tail on the back end. What I mean by that is I'm adding years to my life, but I should also be adding life to those years. So when we look at this 1v23, what we're really looking at is your time that you're investing are you getting a return on that and is it measurable can you see it in other areas of your life and commonly when we look at this people may be lacking um like continual progression or like their progress is all gym heavy so all results are centered on gym results and data for the gym with like weight loss that's fine weight loss should occur potentially for a lot of people but it should occur as a byproduct and symptom of a greater goal and i'll talk about that today but that's one example another one is just you know continually testing every week every quarter rather if you're continually testing every quarter because it's like well science backs this programming it's like sure science can back that programming and that's good but at some point you're going to hit your heaviest lift and that's it you're going to hit one day it could be in your 20s your 30s your 40s your 50s doesn't really matter you're going to hit your heaviest barbell, right? And you've got so much other shit going on in your life in what we refer to as life conditions that sometimes you miss a couple of weeks and then you come in on a testing week and it's like, Fuck, I just don't feel like doing this. But if the culture of that place is like, hey, we should be getting results, get underneath the barbell and so forth, the reality is you do not touch barbells when you leave the facility. That doesn't make barbells redundant. What it does do is peg them down from being the king tool because they are just a multi-tool any other industry building medical doesn't matter a tool that's a multi-tool is not a specialist tool it's like well it's it's not that good it's a washer dryer right it's not really good at either one so it's just powerlifting and weightlifting and bodybuilding have made the barbell king whereas the barbell is just useful that's all it is when you leave the gym you don't touch barbells again so if you're time if it's sort of gym greedy centered around just data just da- data is important don't say i'm not saying that i'm saying if it's just the data then we're kind of missing the subjective data associated with that and so sometimes we go if i'm getting stronger on the barbell that means i'm going to have a greater life maybe maybe that's true there's an overlap for sure the key thing there though is that and it'll talk to these principles the difference between a gym centric approach versus a life centric approach and so the difference between a gym centric approach is and a life centric approach is I'm going to the gym to get stronger for the gym as opposed to these are the things that I want to do in life and the gym should be able to partner and help me be able to do those things better. So my life becomes centric and the gym becomes auxiliary as a way for to help me do those things in life. Sometimes people get caught up in the gym centric approach, which is fine. That is a, that if that is your thing, if that's a big part of your life, the gym is just like a sport would be or hiking for someone else. That's fine. But a lot of people want a life centric concept, but they're taking a gym centric approach, which means that they're, they're they're kind of pushing themselves in the gym. They're trying to get results in the gym, hoping that it's going to mean that they can spend more time with their kids or do all these other things better. And there is an overlap. But at some point with a gym-centric approach, you end up spending more time in the gym and more time in the gym and less time doing the things in life. So you have a choice of understanding what balance is for you and at certain stages of life. So... It's a really, I find it a really murky concept, I have to admit, but it's something that I really fundamentally believe is important because a lot of the fitness industry will want to use your results to be able to market to get more people in. And 
The difficulty then is that it can drive you further and further away from what's ultimately important to you. And it also is trying to promise a subjective result with objective data. And both are important, but when it, it, it kind of comes up short because it's more so like, and this is what I want for my gym and any other gym that I work with. What is it you want to do with your life and how can we work with you and support you and partner with you so that you can do more of that? That's it, right? And for some people, it means that they don't actually try and chase 1RMs every 13, 12 weeks, right? That's just, it's not actually that beneficial for them. It doesn't mean that they there's not benefit to getting underneath a heavy barbell or a heavy sandbag or pushing themselves on a rower or all that sort of stuff or that we shouldn't program cycles because we should. It's not saying that. It's going, are we shifting more towards gym-centric and data-heavy approach for that person? Or are we shifting more to life-centric and including the data in it and making sure that we're partnering with them? Because some people, you only need to be in the gym twice a week if that's what you wanted to do. Because maybe four times a week is going to take you away from doing the things you ultimately want to do outside of here. Look, I had a story one time. This dad came in and he hadn't been training. He's got young kids and he's like, hey, I uh, sort of need to start looking after myself. I'm super motivated. I've got a couple of young kids and I, w- I want to play with them and, and kind of be the fun dad and play with them as, as they grow up and grow older. It's like, cool, how old are the kids? They're nine and seven. All right, they're getting around. And I'm like, great. This guy hasn't done training for years, if at all. And I said, how many times a week are you wanting to train? He's like, look, at the moment, I'm pretty motivated. Something obviously occurred. I'm pretty motivated, so I'm keen to get in as much as I can. So I'm thinking five times a week. I'm like, okay, five times a week, you work full-time? He's like, yeah, full-time, have my own business. So pretty full-on with that as well. I'm like, okay, so you work full-time, have your own business, and uh, you want to train five times a week. He's like, yep. And I'm like, so when are you playing with your kids? It's like, don't miss the goal. Like, like play with them now. So the the gym should help support that, right? Another version of this is, and I've worked, we'll probably like this at one point, but I've definitely worked with plenty of gyms and plenty of PTs over time that have said something similar. And what they'll say is something along the lines of, we want the client's best hour of their day. We want to make sure that their best hour of the day is with us. We want to do what we can to make this their best hour. And I said, okay, so you want that person's, best hour of the day to be about your gym and not about their life and their family and their life outside of the gym? Shouldn't their one hour in the gym help to make them do their best hour better? Shouldn't it help them be more present? Shouldn't it help them be more active, be more uh, energetic or be more loving or whatever the case might be? Shouldn't it allow them to do their best hour better? Shouldn't we be partnering with them so they can leverage and get more out of that rather than making it about the gym? doesn't mean that it can't be the gym. I've worked, I've built this place that I own for 13 years. I've worked in it for 20, I'm for sure. But I much prefer to hear the stories about family skiing together because they could do that because I don't have knee pain anymore. That's the kind of thing that I want. Or the fact that they're so keen that they previously couldn't ride a bike with their child and now they can, so they're going to do that more often or whatever the case might be. But the one hour should be about the life and we should be helping to uphold that. That is one of the key differences between a life-centric and a gym-centric approach. Then there's another concept here, which is people-centric versus program-centric. And commonly, there's a program-centric approach. This is the program, and you need to follow the program. This is RX. This is a prescribed concept, uh, weights, movements, etc., and everything else is scaled, which is presupposing everyone should be doing, like in CrossFit world, handstand snatches, dumbbell overhead lunges, like all of these things. Now, majority of people have the capabilities to do that, whether that's over time or not. I'm yet to meet an accountant that needs to snatch a barbell. So our, saying that that's RX is actually making it program centric and about the actual gym and CrossFit in that example. Nothing against CrossFit. I do like CrossFit. It's just an example. So don't get any, up too upset. The other way around that is going, here are the base fundamental functional movement patterns that if majority of people mastered, they would have a greater yield and greater return uh, in their life outside of the gym. That is a base, fundamental, functional approach. And we have pathways of development from there as necessary for the individual. This is an inverse, right? We want, we want to go, here's a program, here's a guideline. We need to adapt it for you to make it people-centric, person-centric, you-centric. And you have a role to play in that. So you need to be able to go, well, A, why am I adapting? But also B, like we have 150 clients. I can't program for 150 clients. 
what I can do is program some GPP, general physical preparedness, and then I can program three variations, so three variations of the guideline of that. And then I work with my coaches to make sure they have the skill sets to be able to adapt it per person based on a variety of different factors. And so this now becomes people-centric rather than program-centric. And that's really important because what we're looking at is different um, movement patterns rather than specific exercises. And where we get caught up is when we go, it's a program, these are the exercises, what you're looking to do. It's like, no, no, no. Over the space of learning and deepening a better body body awareness, these are different movement patterns we want to master over time. And here's the variations we should look at to help that person meet it where they're at and know how to progress moving forward. Simple. Of course, it's simple. And so there's two key things here that I would lean on. One is someone's flexibility, not just flexibility as in the joints, their actual flexibility of how they approach things. So we have someone that's going all or nothing. It's going to lead to a lot of nothing. Black and white is ends up being a lot of nothing. So the person's flexible approach, moving from go hard or go home, because it ends up being a lot of home, to a model I call RPI, so rate of preemptive intensity. What that means is as you come in, you don't need to feel 100%. You don't even need to feel like you want to do it. That, that's okay, it's normal. You can come in, start warming up, and you use your warm-up as a check-in for yourself. How am I feeling? Where am I at? How's my body feeling? Has my head in the game? And you use that warm-up as a buffer. The day's done for now. Here I am. I am here. And what that allows you to do is to check in and go, out of 100, what kind of percentage do I have? And you might start warming up, you might start moving and be like, nah, I'm cooked, I'm gonna go home. Great call, great. Because you came in, you warmed up and then made the decision, you must have been cooked, go home, rest, recover, come back tomorrow. Whereas there's been plenty of times, this has saved countless sessions for me, warm up and I'm like, fuck, it's not that bad. Once the blood's pumping, talking to people, getting a bit social, I can actually go through and do this and train, but I'm probably only gonna approach it at 75% today because that's what I've got based on my life conditions, my mental bank account, my emotional bank account, my physical bank account. I'm going to take about a 75% approach to it. I'm going to actually work on some skill acquisition with the movement, pay attention to feel, feeling my hamstrings more in my squats and paying attention to my nasal breathing with my workout as well and let that let my pace be dictated off that. That is a way that I have a rate of preemptive intensity that gives me flexibility with my approach and that allows me to be consistent with training. So over the space of 52 weeks, I train far more often and I get far further ahead and my compound interest on my intergenerational health increases significantly over time. That's how that works and that's the benefit of it. And I don't think I've ever explained that as well as I did just then. So you're welcome. But how does this fit within the ecosystem? So my life conditions, how does it fit with everything? How does this impact? How does the decision to move and train and how I train, how does that impact all the other areas? And how does it fit with all the other areas of my life? How does my workout? How does my work in? How does that all fit in? How does breathing? How does moving? How does resting? How does recovering? Saunas, ice baths, whatever, running, doesn't matter. Jiu-jitsu, keep going. How does that actually fit into the ecosystem of my life? Rather than it being central and centric, how is it playing a role of being a important cog as part of the ecosystem of everything I'm doing? So how does it fit in? How does it benefit and help everything else? So flexible and understanding, zooming out, looking at it as an ecosystem thing at this stage of my life, how does it fit? So really what we're getting at here is helping an individual get a go from lack of progression and probably like a, a gym greedy approach um, and it's fine if people enjoy spending time in the gym and that's their, you know, social sport. That's great. That's that's clearly, I, I, I play social sport like it's just a different format. So it's fine. It's more so going, checking with yourself and going, is my one hour in the gym helping to positively impact 23 hours outside of this facility? Am I getting a return on my investment? If not, something needs to change and you need to change it. So is there a clear ROI on my time and effort in the gym? Does my time in the gym, does that have a purpose is this purposeful, right? Because there's a clear difference between social and casual and you need to make the distinction there of what's really important for you. And the last version of the two different approaches I want to offer you is, is am I approaching this as a holistic approach, looking at my whole life? Like holistic is spelled with a W in this case, a holistic approach or am I thinking of it as little compartments? If I'm, if I'm taking a compartment approach, I'm neglecting the fact that all of these interplay and interrelate with each other. When I can zoom out and see the whole thing, it allows me way more flexibility and way more consistency over a longer period of time, which yields a far greater result on 
kinesthetic awareness, interpersonal and intrapersonal awareness, nutritional education, and consistency with the method and approach that you're taking. That will yield you a far greater return on investment when we start looking at intergenerational health. And on that note, team, I'm done. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this podcast, it would mean the world to me if you'd pass it on to someone else that you think would also enjoy this podcast. Uh, once again, this is part of the Boss Fit 30. The Boss Fit 30 is a free program that I run uh, that I've built out. It's got plenty of stuff in it. You can find out more in the show notes. Uh, otherwise, that's me done. I'm out for today. Until next time, peace and pizza. I'll see you soon.